Hi, my name is Shireen. I am a mum of two daughters, a 12 year old and a two year old. I'm also a black woman living here in the UK. Earlier on this week, I watched a video of Amy Cooper and her dog and how she used her position of privilege. It caused me to think about of being the only black face when I step into conferences, the only black, black face on a board, the only black face in a business, but never really used my voice publicly. Now I was born here, my mum is Jamaican and my dad is from Guyana, so Caribbean blood, Caribbean culture is part of my culture as is being British. Spaces are not always welcome or do not always make us feel welcome. And some people would look at me and you know I've got something to say about absolutely everything. And they go, oh, Shereen's not talking about it. Can't be that bad. Because if it was that bad, Shereen would be talking about it. We're very conscious of the precariousness of our position. In some businesses, when you are the only black face, you will be the only black face, meaning they are not going to hire another 10, 15 or 20 people who look like us. When we apply for a job and we interview, if the person who did the job before us was black, and in any way, shape or form, they did not perform well in that job, we would not be hired. So what that means is when we do get those jobs and we get those positions of authority, we're so conscious of what it takes to get there that we don't want to rock the boat. The saying don't bite the hand that feeds you is there for a reason, because actually we use those same phrases. Those phrases are used to us. It says, don't upset the apple cart because just remember who pays your salary. So when you know that your position is tentative, is that you are less likely to speak out, lest you be accused of playing the race card. Because anytime you talk about anything to do with race, people feel uncomfortable. Keeping that whole conversation um, and how we feel under wraps with this all. You can tell, you only have to look at my LinkedIn post. I've been on one. For the last few days and I know that some people would have gone, gone through my post and thought oh this is not like Shireen she's normally so bright and bubbly look she's normally like posting you know whatever I'm posting about now I talk about what's going on in the business world what's going on in HR what's going on in technology how we should all be helping people to fulfill their potential because that's one of the things that I massively care about and then all of a sudden here she is posting okay but maybe that's just a one-off Oh, look, here she is again. She's posted a second time. This time, she's included a Korean gospel group who are fabulous. Oh, but a third time she's put, oh, no, 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 no. She's clearly on a black mission, so I'm going to unfollow her. Some people mm, probably didn't want to like it or comment or engage because that's like, it's almost like, political and you can't really be seen to be engaging in political but my counter argument is this is about humanity and this is about people's lives people being attacked people being threatened because of the color of their skin that's not politics in the same way me doing this video and opening my newsletter with this and not some bright and breezy art that even just by talking about this i am threatening my own position but i'm going to do it anyway that by me not saying anything about this meant I was actually compromising on my integrity. And I knew this was the case because before I wrote the LinkedIn post, I couldn't sleep, which is why I wrote the LinkedIn post, because it was really sitting on my soul. I was it can't be just for black people to be the ones commenting and posting. It cannot be for us to explain how it feels to be a minority. It is not our problem to solve on our own. 
you know, and I have to look at myself in the mirror and say, well, what are the things that I do that can help make somebody else's experience in work, in life better? Is I'm thinking about my two daughters. I'm thinking about my brother as a black man. And I guess I've been so conscious of not being the black person who makes people feel uncomfortable with my blackness by talking about it. And I'll tell you how that plays out. How that plays out is when they say to me, like, hi, Shereen, how are you? I say, I'm fine. Like, oh, I'm good, you know, busy, you know, oh, yeah, busy, busy. What I really want to say is, A, I'm not fine, right? B, when I saw that video of Amy Cooper, what I was thinking to myself is, th this was like, I can read all the history books. But when I saw how she reacted, I thought, is, is this what it was like for my people not so long ago when it was felt that they were stepping out of line? So when people say to me, like, we've, we've made so much progress, yeah, maybe we have in some ways, but kind of maybe we haven't. And we can't have made the progress because I'm not talking about that. So when you say to me, like, how am I doing? I'm not going to tell you about that. That's how I'm feeling. I'm also not going to tell you the, the like the hurt and disappointment that I feel when there are many organisations who have hired heads of diversity and inclusion, VPs of DNI. Um, they talk about you know the importance of inclusion and diversity, and we've got people from all over the world, and we've got all these cultures coming into our business. And those same leaders have said nothing. It hurts me when I see organizations who are running webinars and panels on inclusion and um, culture and helping and creating environments to help people be their best and they too have said nothing these are the things that I really want to say when you say hey how are you but I can't and I don't and I don't because I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable and therein lies the problem the burden is always on us black people to not make people feel uncomfortable because our presence sometimes makes people feel uncomfortable. So the burden is on me to tone it down. The burden is on me and my fellow black community members to tone it down so we are accepted and we know like we cannot bring all of ourselves to work we cannot bring all of ourselves society because to do that means we are reducing our opportunity and lord knows we have fought really hard just by doing this and by talking about it there are some people who maybe wanted to work with me are probably going to say no 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 because i don't want to be associated with anything black but what i will say is that there are people dying there are people being threatened, there are people not having access to opportunity, all because of the colour of their skin. And at the moment, the corporate landscape, with a few exceptions, is one of silence. And I, like, I don't even know what to tell you, like what to do differently. But if you have a black person in your business, and you are not talking about this with them, and you are not talking about how this has made you reflect as a leader about how you run your business and how you create a psychologically safe place for your employees to be, you are failing your employee. You cannot be talking about mental health, um, protecting the environment and not talk about this because this is about people being killed, being threatened, abusing their position of privilege that society has continuously reinforced to oppress other individuals. That is not politics, but I care about this so much that I've not slept properly. It's tough because of the silence. Like it kills me that only black people are talking about this and posting about it and writing articles and just, you know, like an outpouring of grief almost. Why are we the only people doing this? So this is the environment that we're in. This is diversity and inclusion and life. And 
if you're not talking about this, if you're not trying to think about what you can do differently, so in the nicest way possible, what I'm trying to say to people is you need to pick a side. Because if you're not commenting, if you're not trying to reach out to other black people that you have in your business or that you know in your network and just say, like, how are you? And just listen, because sometimes you just have to listen.